the very early 90s, floppy disks were still the default storage medium we all used. The standard floppy disk for PC could only store up to 1.44 MB of data. Some years later, more and more people connected their computers to the internet, but used dial-up connection that was slow, expensive, and you couldn't even use your phone at the same time. As computers became more and more capable of handling multimedia, we wanted more pictures, sounds, music, that neither floppy disks nor internet at the time could give us. But it was time for a new storage medium to shine. The compact disk. With a compact disk or a CD, you could suddenly have access to 650 megabytes of data. Enough space for video, music, sounds, text and pictures. And this gave rise to a very particular type of software. Software with information that we previously could only get from books and maps. This is called reference software. And today we're going to take a closer look at a few of them. First we are going to have a look at this nice box here. The Encyclopedia of Space and the Universe. The ultimate interactive learning trip to outer space. There are so many nice pictures here, like this star dome, sky watching, solar system explained. This is the lunar moon probe. And inside here we can see, I guess, the CD and also a small book. Okay, that was a nice start. So I'm not going to go into everything here, but I'm going to take a, a quick look at some different different things. Let's try sky watching. Space observatories. In space, optical telescopes can produce clearer, more detailed pictures. Or maybe, or maybe I can press that button. In space, 
Optical telescopes can produce clearer, more detailed pictures than they can on Earth, where the atmosphere distorts the light from distant objects. Satellites can also be deployed in space to collect the types of radiation that are blocked by our atmosphere. Space observatories are launched by rockets or released into orbit from the space shuttle. Activities? Maybe I can do something? Something fun? Land on the moon? Level 1. Start. Control the thrust of the landing module to, uh, to achieve a successful landing. Okay, and this takes a long time. Go down faster. No! But I have no thrust, but it's increasing in altitude. Why? Or have no fuel left. Oops. Oops. Hey, Houston, we've had a problem here. Oops. Say again, please. Houston, we've had a problem. Let's try something else. Launch a rocket. Drag rocket. Stages onto the launch pad to build Skylab, Saturn V, Saturn 1B. Oh, we have a video here. Saturn V takes off. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Roger, we got a roll from Tower cleared. Roger, roll. Okay, so we have need to try to remember how it looks, what it looks like. So that engine, first stage, second stage, third stage. Hmm. Was this one, or I think it was this one. And then this one. I can't move it. There. Um. No. Okay, let's just try this and then... Incorrect assembly.
This perhaps. Three, two, yes. one, ignition, lift off. I saw something else here. Quizmaster. Space. New game. player <laughs> What is Fred Whipple's area of interest? I have no idea. Um. What is the boundary of a black hole called? Uh, event horizon, I believe. What, th what uh, theory was proposed by Fred Hoyle? That's. I don't know. I know it's not uh, this one. But... Mm. Going to go with the one here. Oops. Next. Which are the main elements of the clouds of the interstellar medium. I think it's this one. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Jupiter's volume is how many times greater than of the Earth? Jupiter. I'll go ahead and select 1300 times. Yeah. Approximately how many stars does the Milky Way galaxy contain? Stars? That's got to be it. many many stars. End of game, okay. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the next CD. And this is the next piece of software we're going to take a look at. Encyclopedia of History. History as it happened witnessed the key world events of the last 4 million years. Amazing. So there is not that much inside the box. So we are just going to take a bit look at the box itself here. As in the back side of the box. So here it says 4 million years. Over 3000 screens, 800,000 words, 50 animations and films, 2000 subject to subject links. Stuff like that, especially sound files and animations and films and such. That was a big deal back in the day. And look here, it is MMX optimized. Enhanced video performance on PCs featuring Intel's Pentium processors with MMX technology. Alright. I also think it's so much fun to look at the system requirements here. It says actually Windows 95 only. CPU is a 486DX 33MHz. 12MB of RAM. Double speed CD-ROM, yeah, 
I think we are good. Yeah, the only thing in the box is this CD. That was a nice introduction. And we are not done yet. Or I guess I'm supposed to press something. East Africa. Early humans stand tall on rear legs. Hominids improve their survival skills. Homo erectus emerges. In 1368, the Ming Dynasty came to power, freeing China from the mighty Mongol Empire. The autocratic China became the largest and wealthiest state. This is nice, these uh, short videos. The Ming government was gradually weakened by ineffectual emperors. They were unable to resist a new threat from Manchu tribesmen in the north, and in 1644, the Ming Dynasty fell. But I can move. Oh, there's more here. Hmm. Vampires. Can I do something here? Can I? American independence is declared. Okay, so they try to make it interesting at least. And uh, I guess it kind of works. The snapshots. Inventions. Ford builds the Model T. Let's look at the other side here. Film. Two and a half down. Big shadow. The eagle has landed. 
Well, I must say it has a nice interface and uh, lots of uh, videos, so that's nice. But let's go to the next uh, CD. And this is the last box we are going to take a look at today. Compton's Interactive World Atlas from 1997. Discover every country in the world. And you can see it has detailed satellite and country maps and 3D flights. Nice. Designed for Microsoft Windows 95. The world. Okay, what to do? Earth. The greenhouse effect occurs when the sun's heat is trapped at the Earth's surface by gases such as carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and chlorofluorocarbons in the atmosphere. Like the glass in a greenhouse, these gases reflect the heat back to the Earth's surface, where it is retained. This is commonly referred to as the greenhouse effect. The burning of fossil fuels such as coal and oil releases large amounts of carbon dioxide. In the last century, the Earth's surface temperature has risen by one degree Fahrenheit. Some scientists blame the greenhouse effect for recent extremes of heat and cold. The continuing increase in carbon emissions alone may drastically change the world's climatic patterns. Okay, didn't intend to go political here, but uh, uh, let's see if we can find something else interesting. Three D flight. Oh, I need to change the amount of colors. Huh. 
<laughs> okay. Ah, it was quite blocky, but uh, all right. Weather. Hurricanes, called typhoons in the Pacific and cyclones in the Indian Ocean, are massive low-pressure storm systems with spiraling winds that can reach 180 miles per hour. Hurricanes begin as tropical depressions fueled by warm equatorial seas. As hot humid air rises, scattered thunderstorms form that can join to create a central low-pressure area. The storms merge and circle this low-pressure eye, gathering strength and speed as they draw inward to become a hurricane that is set spinning by the Earth's rotation. Hmm. Since hurricanes require a constant source of warm, wet air, they eventually lose strength and break apart over land. Because they're usually driven by the trade winds, the western regions of oceans are at greatest risk of hurricanes. The Philippines have the highest rate at nearly 20 a year. Hurricanes are ranked on a scale from 1 to 5, with winds ranging from a minimal 74 miles per hour to catastrophic at over 155. Each year, an alphabetical list is chosen that alternates female and male names. The names are given in order as the terrible storms emerge. Norbe. Norbe is for a good landscape. Norway's geography is varied, including a southern region of temperate forest, a mountainous center, and eastern tundra. Its coastline is known for its fjords, long, narrow, and often deep inlets from the sea, between deep cliffs and slopes. Some pronunciations here. Yes. Ja. Nei. Tusen takk. Vær så snill. USA. Well, the video is nearing its end, and it's a shame that we don't have these type of software and these boxes anymore. Or, I haven't checked if we actually do have the possibility to buy something like this now, but I don't think so. But there was something magical about these when I was a kid. I had Route 66, and when I got that, it kind of validated my computer. It wasn't just for games anymore, because I could tell my dad, now it's useful. I can look at the maps and stuff. So that's also a thing. But yeah, also the animations, music, pictures on a CD like this, that was magical for me back in the day. I liked this one the most, of course, because it's, it's space. Nothing is more interesting than space. I would have loved to have this as a kid. And also, it had some fun games and stuff to do, instead of only listening and reading. So yeah, I love this one. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you did enjoy, and I have a question for you. Because I was inspired by ASMR when I was filming opening up the boxes here. Because I wanted to give you the experience of opening up the box instead of me simply explaining it to you what I'm doing. And I was wondering if you liked that or not. I tried to capture the sounds of opening it up and uh, taking out the contents and you know flipping the page and so on. So if you enjoyed that way of opening up a box, that is a more inspired way, or if you want me to do it the normal way instead, please let me know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you next time.